Chapter 3, Lesson 5, Dividing Integers, No Calculators Allowed. Just kidding. If you like to use one, you're more than welcome to. I would suggest having a multiplication table available. You can use this one, or there's one in your planner that you got, or you can look at one online. So when we talk about a multiplication sequence and dividing, we're going to look at writing a multiplication problem as a division problem. So when I look at the first example, multiplication sentence is 2 times 6 equals 12. So to change that to a division sentence, we take the product, 12, and we divide that by each one of the dividends. So 12 divided by 6 is 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. They are both equal, they're both positive, so they have the same signs. The quotient or the answer is 2 and 6, and they're both positive. So let's try the next one. 2 times negative 4 equals negative 8. So I take the product of negative 8, and I divide that by one of my factors, which is negative 4 equals. 8 divided by 4 is 2. They're both negative, so that means this has to be positive. Negative 8 divided by 2. And I know that I have, in order to have a negative, I have to multiply by a negative, so this has to be a negative 4. So these are different sign changes. The quotient of 1 is 2. 8, negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. 2 is positive. Negative 4, of course, is negative. We try the next one. Negative 3 times 5 equals negative 15. So we start with our product, negative 15 divided by 5 is negative 3. Negative 15 divided by negative 3 equals 5. So as we can see, they are different again. Negative 3 is a negative, and, they, and 5 is positive. So our quotient is negative 3, and 5, negative 3 is negative, 5 is positive. I look at the last one, negative 2 times negative 5 equals 10. I start with the product, which is 10. 10 divided by negative 5 equals negative 2. 10 divided by negative 2 equals negative 5. So they both have a negative at the answer, so they are the same. Quotient is negative 2 and negative 5, and they are both negative. Here we show you what the answers are. So on the opposite side, we have to find the quotient. So we look at dividing integers with different signs. So we know that if something positive happens to a positive person, that's a good thing. We know that if a positive person and something negative happens to them, that's a bad thing. We have a negative person and something good happens to them, that's a negative thing. And if a bad thing happens to a bad person, that's a good thing. So we always remember that when we're multiplying or dividing. So when we look at letter A, we have 20 divided by negative 4. Well, I know 4 times 5 is 20. So my answer is going to be 5. But then I look at my, my quotient. My quotient is 20. So it means it's positive. So if it's positive, I have to have either both positive or both negative. In this case, I have a negative 4. So my answer has to be negative 5. Because negative times negative is a positive. Letter B. Negative 81 divided by 9. I know 9 times 9 is 81. If my quotient 
my answer to my division problem is negative, that means that I have to have one of each sign. If nine is positive, then my answer has to be negative, so a negative nine. And letter C, if I have negative 45 divided by nine, again, my quotient is negative 45. I know nine times five is 45, but if the quotient's negative, I have to have one of both signs when I multiply, right? So if this is positive, nine's positive, my negative has to be the five. So let's divide with some integers with the same signs. So if we look at letter D, negative 24 divided by four, I know that four times six is negative four. So I put the six up top. Again, I look at those same the same signs again. And I know that to get a negative, I have to have a negative times a positive. So it has to be a positive six. Letter E, negative nine divided by negative three. Well, I know that three times three is nine. Negative nine is my quotient, so to get a negative, I have to multiply a negative times a positive, and so my answer is three. And letter F, negative 28 divided by negative seven. Well, I know four times seven is 28. And again, since my quotient is negative, I have to have a negative times a positive, so my answer is going to be positive. Letter G, A divided by B, if A is negative 33 and B is negative 3, if I take negative 33 and divide that by negative 3, I know that 3 times 11 is 33. So then I look at my signs again. I know that my quotient is negative. So in order to have a negative product, when I multiply, I have to have two different signs. So my answer here is 11. So here I want you to try some, pause the video, answer them, and then come back, and I will have the answers for you. So number one, negative 51 divided by negative 3. That is going to be 17. To have a positive, it has to be negative. Two negatives make a positive. Number two, negative 121 divided by 11. That's going to be 11. But if my quotient is negative and this is positive, that has to be negative. So when I have negative 24 divided by 4, 4 times 6 is 24. If this is positive and this is negative, then to get a negative, I have to multiply by a negative. Negative times a positive is a negative. Number 4, negative 12 divided by negative 2. 2 times 6 is 12. My quotient's negative, so when I multiply these two together, I have to have one negative, one positive, so my answer is 6. Number five, negative 40 divided by negative eight. Five times eight is 40. Again, my quotient is negative, so if my product here is negative, this has to be positive. So in a word problem, it says the average temperature in January for the North Pole, Alaska, is negative 24 degrees Celsius. Use this expression. 9 times C plus 160 divided by 5 to find this temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Round to the nearest degree. So when I look at this, C is going to be the temperature in Celsius. So I'm going to multiply 9 times negative 24 plus 160 all divided by 5. So 
So I know that 24 times 9 is 216 plus 160 divided by 5. So 216 plus 160 is 376. And we're going to divide that by 5. Just kidding. We're going to do that over again. So remember we have 9 times C, so 9 times a negative 24 plus 160 divided by 5. So 9 times 24 is 216, but that's a negative 216 because a positive times a negative is a negative plus 160 divided by 2, oops, I'm sorry, divided by 5. So negative 216 plus a one, positive 160 is a negative 134 divided by 5. And 134 divided by 5 is going to be 26 degrees Fahrenheit. So try some on your own. Again, pause the video, read through this expression, and then find your answer and compare it with what I have. So your answer is 14.5 billion dollars per week. And what I did was took 987 minus 900 and got 87 and then divided that by 6. So your homework for lesson chapter 3, lesson 5 is available on Google Classroom. You are assigned to do 1 through 23 odds only. Please make sure you only do the odds. If you do the extra, if you do the evens as well, I'll give you extra credit for those if you do that, even though it says there is extra credit for this assignment. Have a wonderful day.